Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about combustion analysis. So we'll talk about the setup for this process. We'll make some predictions given a known molecule. And we'll determine the formula of an unknown given the results of a combustion analysis. We know that combustions in the simplest form are when we have a hydrocarbon represented by the CXHY reacting in the presence of oxygen and generating CO2, water, and a lot of heat. And so to perform a combustion analysis, we perform the reaction in this first chamber where we put in some mass of sample and react it with excess oxygen. Then we pass the gases through a filter and into this water absorber. And so we pull all of the water out of our mixture and then we're able to figure out how many grams of water are present in the products, which can tell us something about how many grams of hydrogen total there is in a sample. And then we reach the CO2 absorber, which instead tells us about the grams of CO2 given off by this reaction, which can tell us about the grams of carbon in our sample. And so by the conservation of mass, we would say that the total grams of our sample would have to be equal to the grams of all the individual pieces added up. So it would be equal to the grams of hydrogen plus the grams of carbon. Okay. So we can go ahead and start with a compound and make predictions about what is given off. How many grams of carbon dioxide and how many grams of water will we get? So let's go ahead and try that. Given a known molecule, like purine, whose formula is listed there, we can determine how much water and carbon dioxide will be given off. So purine is sort of the simplest form of molecules that make up some of our DNA and RNA components. So we know that our chemical formula is comparing things in terms of moles. And so if we were to say I have a 100 gram sample of the purine put into my combustion analysis chamber, I can determine how many moles of purine that would correspond to. And I have the molecular weight written above, which is just from the periodic table for each of the atoms times their subscript. So we'll say we have one mole of our purine for 120 grams. So our grams will cancel. We'll be now in moles of purine. And we can go ahead and determine how many grams of CO2 are given off by converting this from moles of purine to moles of carbon. So we can cancel out moles of purine. And convert to moles of carbon using the chemical formula. So we'll bring this five down here. Say that I get five moles of carbon for every one mole of that purine. Okay. And since we're interested in the amount of CO2 being given off, we can just say to make one mole of CO2, we would have to put in one mole of carbon because there's one atom of carbon in every one molecule of CO2. And then we can use the molecular weight of CO2 to convert to grams of CO2. So using the periodic table, I can determine that one mole of CO2 
is going to weigh 44 grams. And so this ends up corresponding to about 183 grams of CO2. Okay, and so once we know how much CO2 is given off, we can also figure out how much water would be given off by performing the same combustion. And so we can start with our same 100 grams of the purine we can again convert it to moles using that 120 grams per mole And then we can convert to moles of hydrogen using the formula of the purine. And so we see that for every one mole of purine, because our formula is C5H4N4, we'll get four moles of hydrogen for every one mole of purine. And then we can convert from hydrogen to water. We know water is H2O, so for every one mole of H2O, we're going to have to put in two moles of hydrogen. Okay, and then finally we can go ahead and convert from moles of water to grams using its molecular weight of 18 grams per mole. And we find that this results in about 30 grams of water. Okay, and so I'm sure you've noticed that there's also nitrogen making up our compound, and that is likely given off as N2 gas. But we'll find that with problems that we'll do in a minute, we don't need to necessarily know the grams of N2 that would be created. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. In this setup, instead of knowing the chemical formula of what we're given, we know how many grams of CO2 and water were given off after performing the combustion with 100 grams of our unknown sample. So we know to determine the empirical formula for given unknown, we need to know how many moles of carbon are there compared to how many moles of hydrogen compared to how many moles of nitrogen. So we'll have to use the given data to figure out how many moles of each atom are making up our formula. So we can go ahead and start with the data given to us by the carbon dioxide and figure out how many moles of carbon atoms are contained in our 100 grams of unknown. So I'm going to start with the given mass of CO2, which is at 204.65 grams of CO2. And whenever we're converting between different compounds, we're going to want to do that in terms of moles. So I know I have one mole of CO2. for every 44 grams of CO2. And I'm interested in what's happening with the carbon, and I know that every one mole of CO2 will have just one mole of carbon. And I can solve this and find that I have 4.65 moles of carbon contained in my sample. And to complete this problem, we'll see that we need to know how many grams of carbon that is. So I'm also going to go ahead and say that for every one mole of carbon, I'll have about 12 grams. 
and find that I have 55.8 grams of carbon from my sample. And we'll see why we need that in a little bit. Okay, so now we can look at the water and the information given to us by that. And so I'll start with the grams of water given off, which is at 104.65 grams of water. And convert that to moles. And then I'm interested in the moles of hydrogen. And so I know for every one mole of water, I'll get two moles of hydrogen out. And this gives me 11.6 moles of hydrogen, which I can also convert into grams of hydrogen using the molecular weight. And say for every one mole of hydrogen, there is about one gram of hydrogen. So an easy conversion. And I'll find that there's about 11.6 grams of hydrogen from my original sample. So we need to figure out how many moles of nitrogen are present in our sample, but we don't know how many grams of N2 are given off. But using that law of conservation of mass, we can take our original 100 grams of sample and subtract off the number of grams of that that were carbon. And we can subtract off the number of grams of that that were water. Or I'm sorry, that were hydrogen. And determine that the remaining mass of our sample is coming from the nitrogen and would correspond to 32.6 grams of nitrogen. And so now we can figure out how many moles of nitrogen would be present in our sample using its molecular weight. And we can say we get one mole of nitrogen for every 14 grams, giving us 2.3 moles of nitrogen. Okay, so now I have the number of moles of each of the three atoms making up my molecule. And I want to figure out which one has the fewest number of moles and divide the others by that number. That way I have everything in terms of a ratio to each other and it should work out such that we have whole number integers in our formula. And so since nitrogen has the fewest number of moles I'm going to take my moles of carbon, so my 4.65 moles of carbon, and divide that by my moles of nitrogen. And I'll find that this is about 2, it's pretty close to 2. And so I can go ahead and say that if I just had, end up having one nitrogen, I'm going to have two carbons and put that in for my formula. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing with the hydrogen. So I'll take my 11.6 moles of hydrogen divided by the 2.3 moles of nitrogen. And I'll find that I get about a value of five. So for every one mole of nitrogen, I'll have five moles of hydrogen. And so I can go ahead up here and say that my subscript for nitrogen, or I'm sorry, for hydrogen is five. 
and then for nitrogen it's just going to be 1. Okay, so there's a lot of dimensional analysis for these problems. I really suggest writing out all of your units, making sure you keep track of which numbers corresponding to which molecule or atom, and just trying to stay organized so that you don't lose track of anything.